the last time I talked to you it was about death. I was amazed at your answer and really helped me a lot. Uh, this time I, I am a little bit confused and fits into my personal life too about turning the other cheek kind of thing rather than being combative and getting out of the vortex by people as I perceived attacking me kind of thing and then just responding to that rather than turning the other cheek. So turning the other cheek to you means just what? It means not doing uh, <laughs> nasty things in traffic when the guy cuts you off, you know, kind of thing. And it means at work when people are disrespectful or are not courteous because I'm surrounded by people that I perceive would, could be nicer. And, <laughs> you know, rather than going off in my mind thinking about what I'm going to do to those people <laughs> that are <laughs> insulting me, I think it's holding me back from just participating more fully in the Vortec experience because that just throws you right out of it. Here's the most important thing to understand about this. There is a momentum that is caused by law of attraction, yes? yes? So if you are at the top of the hill in San Francisco and you push your car a little and then you realize what's going to happen, it's out of gear, it has no brake, and you begin to nudge it and it begins to roll, and you catch it early, you get out in front of it and just let it bump up against you, it's easy to stop. But if you're at the bottom of the hill trying to stop it, it's a problem because the momentum is powerful. So if you are not tending to your vibration, not paying attention to how you feel, sort of putting up with negative emotion, enduring it, allowing yourself to experience it and not doing anything about changing your focus or your perspective in order to find yourself more in alignment, then that momentum of resistance is going to get stronger and stronger until there very likely will be an incident. And it is not at that point that we would ever ask anyone to try to restrain themselves. In other words, you're asking the impossible of yourself. It's like saying, okay, so I allow the momentum to ensue and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger and now there's lots of moving parts and then at that point, I should all of a sudden just shut off my vibration. We say, no, that really takes a full night's sleep. What you're probably going to do is just either hit or run. What we're saying is, if you wait until the momentum is such, then there often are no really good choices. There's always a better choice. There's always a path of least resistance. And it always would be better to pull the punch rather than follow through with the punch. Or it's better not to get your own teeth knocked out. In other words, there is always a better choice and a worse choice. But in all of that, if you're waiting until the momentum is really underway before you decide that you're going to change the direction of your vibration, it's never too late, but it's like too late. It's like going about it really the hard way. That's not the path of least resistance. That's the path of most resistance. And so, so often people want to talk to us about those things. And we say, that's the condition. You want to keep having conversations about conditions. We want to have unconditional conversations. We want to have vibrational conversations. We want to show you that you've got power when you wake up. And we want to show you that you can maintain your power as you move through the day. We'd like to help you to realize, and you'll have to practice it on your own, to realize that you don't have to run into somebody that is going to annoy you. You don't. You can practice a vibration that brings less and less and less and less and less of that to you. And yes, if there's a condition that's really annoying, we would always encourage that you take the path of least resistance. And sometimes that is an action path. But if you let that be your general philosophy, and if you let that be the way you live your life, then your life's going to be hard. It's hard to deal with the things that have so much vibrational momentum already going on. So I need to start early in the morning with the idea that this is not going to happen or this is I'm going to have a in the vortex day rather yeah. than letting the momentum start because I know when I get in traffic maybe I'm in a little hurry somebody's cutting me off well that you're already like, practicing Ooh. even as we're <laughs> yeah. visiting here you are adding momentum to bad experiences in traffic yeah they're jumping all over the place at me you know uh, <laughs> where do these guys come from you know? <laughs> you're still doing it yeah I'm, right now and as you talk about that, now you're here in a situation where you're wanting some feedback from us. 
and we're happy to give it. But we want to ask you, can you feel, when you talk about traffic like that, that it doesn't feel so good? It might feel practical. It might feel interesting in some ways. It might feel like something that you're wanting to understand. But how does it really feel? How does it really feel to think about uncomfortable traffic? Not good. No, it's, I would rather have a nice, peaceful ride. Do you need to have a nice, peaceful ride in order to feel good? Uh, yeah. yeah, I need to be peaceful. Well, myself. what we mean is, Esther really likes to watch the races of men and women in cars going really fast. And she likes thinking about how tuned in they are and how efficient they are. One day, Jerry and Esther were driving from Asheville to Atlanta, and they were in a rental car, and Esther was driving. And all of a sudden, she looked in her rearview mirror, and from behind, there were a dozen or maybe more cars coming very fast up behind her. So she just held herself steady because they were coming like a cluster, and it looked like they were in all lanes, and they were coming fast up behind her. So she just moved over and maintained her speed and said to Jerry, look at what's coming. And as they went past, they must have been doing 100 miles an hour, maybe more. The freeways were not empty, but they were not crowded. And this cluster of cars came around them. They were racing cars. They all had marked on them. It was a group of people on their way somewhere, and they were feeling their vitality on the freeway that morning. <laughs> and Esther's first response was, have they lost their minds? And then Jerry said, look at them. Look at them. And so Esther is watching them for the brief time she could still see them. <laughs> the efficiency with which they were moving in and out of lanes. And Jerry said, my bet is we would be safer with that cluster of people around us than any other cluster of people around us because they are really intentional about what they are doing and they are really skilled at what they are doing. They are really flying high. Something was born in Esther that day. <laughs> she thought, I want to feel like that when I drive. I want a car that will do what my mind wants to do. I want to be able to put that car right where I intend to put that car. So what we're getting at is that you don't get to decide what's right traffic and what's wrong traffic. What you get to decide is how you blend in. You don't get to decide what's right traffic about anything, what's the right and wrong behavior, action, or interpretation, or belief about anything. You just get to choose for yourself. And when you align with yourself, then everything around you will accommodate what you are now in alignment with, you see. And so relaxing in to the diversity. Maybe there is not a better subject to talk about contrast and diversity and variance of intentions than in a situation where you're talking about traffic. Yeah, they're all over the place. Yeah. Esther saw a Mythbusters episode the other day. And she was so eager to see it once she realized what they were going to talk about because these are questions that she has had for a very long time. So it was traffic studies, and they had a four-way stop one where they had a lot of cars who were stopping and going and stopping and going and stopping and going, and in a 15-minute period of time, they counted them. And then they had the same cars stopping and going and stopping and going, but this time, instead of stop signs, there was one man who was directing them. And Esther has thought before that if someone is directing, that it would be faster that more cars would go through, but it was not faster. It was significantly faster for every individual to make their own decision about when they were going. Many more cars went through when individuals were making their decision. And then they took the same intersection and they made it a roundabout so that there was no stopping, but they just allowed for 15 minutes cars to go through the roundabout. And this time, even more got through. That was the most significant when there was no stopping. There was no directing from anyone else, and there was every individual making their decisions. Esther loved knowing that. She's been wondering about that for a very long time. It makes her want to trust the other drivers who are making their decisions because it was better for the whole when all of the individuals were making the decisions for themselves. 
Then there was another one where they were testing whether if you would get to your destination faster if you stayed in your lane rather than jumping all around. Well, Jerry and Esther have had this argument for as long as she can remember. <laughs> because it never seemed that they were in the right lane. As soon as they would move over there, that lane would slow down. As soon as she would get over there, she would say, I was in a lane that was going, and now you've got me over here, and now look where we are. I've been watching that big bus, and look where he is. It was a continual conversation that they were having. And so they took a long ride. It was about a 70-mile ride in very busy traffic that Esther knows well near San Francisco. And the person who stayed in the lane arrived one minute later than the person who jumped around. And the person who jumped around was really feeling a lot of stress because she was risking her life on many occasions as she was jumping in and out. And there were a lot of what you were gesturing a little bit ago yeah. that were directed her way as she was moving around. And so what we're getting at here is that everyone just has to stop trying to control what everybody else is doing. And it left Esther with this feeling, and it's something that we've been wanting to express to all of you for a long time, that if left to your own individual devices, you will eventually do what's best for the whole. This is the message that we most want to give to you. You don't have to wait for anyone else to figure this out. You don't even have to wait for them to get tuned in, tapped in, turned on. We're not talking about a traffic scenario where everyone's in the vortex and flowing with ease down the highways. We're talking about you being in the vortex. We're talking about you being in alignment with source. We're talking about you being in the flow of who you are. And consistently enough that you begin to follow those impulses and know. Hesitation is an indication of resistance within you. Ambivalence is an indication of resistance within you. The push-pull of your vibration, the contradiction in your vibration is the only thing, the only thing. You want to shout it, it's so important. It is the only thing that ever hinders you. It's not the other drivers. They are not your enemy. You are. You are your enemy. You are your enemy in the traffic of life, you see. You are the only enemy you have in the traffic of life because you are the only one who really can introduce any obstacles that will hinder you in any way. It's only vibrational obstacles that you are wanting to be aware of because as you get the vibrational obstacles out of your way, then the other ones are non-existent. Path of least resistance. So when I'm shaking my fist, I'm actually shaking it at me. That's kind of... You know. It's an extension of how you feel and you'll get it back. But you don't even have to be shaking your fist. Shaking your fist is a letting loose. It's a more evolved example of how you are feeling, but your vibrational output is enough. The universe is responding to what you mean, not what you say and not what you do. The universe is responding to the vibration that is at the basis of your feeling, I say. So what you're looking for is not perfect traffic. You're looking for a good mood. You're not looking for perfect other drivers. You're looking for a happy heart. You're looking for lighthearted. You're looking for tension free. But practice it on the things that are easiest first. And before you know it, you'll have it during most things. You want your knee jerk response to be a knee jerk response from alignment. So you want it to be humor or dexterity. You want it to be really good driving. You want it to be intuitive driving. You want it to be inspired driving. In other words, an inspired driver in a whole nest of traffic can have a lot of fun. In other words, yeah. really. Okay, I get it. I think that's You're so interesting. Humans are so interesting. We love you so much. <laughs> but you're bored and then you're angry when traffic becomes interesting. <laughs> <laughs>